So, we're going with, was it better to be a boy than a girl in Viking York? And I'm guessing your answer will be... Yes. Better to be a boy than a girl. Well, I got that one wrong. In a nutshell, boys had all the fun and girls got stuck doing the chores. Girls were given instructions on how to handle a sword and fight if they really wanted it. Can't say I've ever heard of an Eric or Bulladax or a Harriet Hardrada. No, I still can't pronounce the name, but you will have heard of the Valkyries. They are all female figures who chose those who would die in battle and those who would live. If that's not wielding power and authority, I don't know what is. Good point about power. Ha, huh, good power point? No? Okay. But I, st- <laughs> but I still don't know how that strengthens the argument about girls having a better time of it in Viking York. Respected. No feared. Female icons of their day. <laughs> oh, please. The Valkyrie were supernatural beings associated with fate. I think that York is best known for its heroes, not its villains. I mean, why would you focus on the bad side of life when you can focus on the bright side, the people who made life a better place to live in? Well, don't you always find it is so much easier to remember the bad side of things, the dark side, even when there is such a bright world around us? Not really. Very well. I challenge you, Hannah Baxter, to find one wholeheartedly good person. Easy. Joseph Roundtree. He gave us libraries and schools as well. Yeah. Did she really just say schools were a good thing? (laughs) <laughs> OK, then. Back to Joseph Roundtree. He brought chocolate into the world to make people happy. I mean, come on. He also brought in fruit pastels, <laughs> which created the abomination of the world, the thing that makes us turn in our sleep, the darkness, the thing that draws all things to it, fruit pastel-flavoured donuts. <laughs> Today we've decided to bring in our time machine. It's bigger on the inside. Best be on our way. Did you know we just travelled back over 1,200 years? That's older than you. Great, 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 great. Okay, we get the point. Let's focus, shall we? Fine. We have arrived in the Viking era, where fur clothing and people carrying shields is normal everyday business. Come on, take that silly hat off. The Vikings didn't actually wear helmets with horns on, you know. Here we are in the Victorian era. This era was only about 150 years ago. Still older than your great, No, 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 not this again. I heard that the Victorians once ruled the world. (laughs) Not exactly. But they were the most powerful and richest country at the time. The Victorians gave us piped water, gas, and by the end of the century, electricity. But that was only for the towns and the cities. In the countryside, they didn't have much of any of it. Lily, do you know what this era made? You just listed most of it. The Victorians made... Chocolate. Oh no, you promised you wouldn't. Once the Vikings had ceased a settlement in 866, they lived and traded here peacefully for around 100 years. I can imagine them all now in Coppergate, hard at work, making coffee. <coughs> making cups. Coppergate was the street of the cup makers. What other places are unique in York? What about the quaint shambles? The street gets its name from the Anglo Saxon word fly shambles. Oh, that sounds lovely. What does it mean? Flesh shelves. Oh, I take it back. So called as many butchers lived and traded here in the medieval times, displaying carcasses on windowsills of each house. In fact, the streets ran with blood, guts and offal daily as animals were slaughtered on site. All right, all right. Not so loud. We're trying to maintain our visitor figures. Don't put them all off. You can't forget about the role that the railways played in turning our city into such an important hub in the north. Railways? Oh no, don't tell me you're a train spotter. Every town has a station. York Station is not exactly a draw for our tourists. Usually somewhere they pass through before getting to the queue outside Betty's. (laughs) But what about the National Railway Museum? 
It is part of the story of York's rise to being the important city it is today. And it gets 800,000 visitors each year. Baffling. Don't forget, it's free to get in. Ah yes, that makes sense now. I know what they say about a Yorkshire man and his money. <laughs> so all we need to do is convince our visitors to look beyond the spires of the Minster and see our proud walled city established by the Romans. Our history reflects the spirit of all those who have walked our streets and have been proud to call York their home. Victorious Vikings, brave saints and hard-working, enterprising individuals who have bequeathed us a city to be proud of.